so welcome to the class on analog mos circuit design in this particular uh, paper uh, we do have uh, five different units so the first unit uh, is on mos device and the corresponding vi characteristics now to start with uh, let me tell you the full form of mos uh, although i think uh, it is known to you from your knowledge uh, of basic electronics so this mos stands for or rather mosfet stands for mosfet stands for metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistor in fact uh, we have discussed about a type of transistor in a previous course on electronic circuit that was bjt and in this paper uh, we will be talking about uh, the analog circuits which are being constructed using the mosfet so as the name suggests uh, so we do have a metal oxide semiconductor and that particular a uh, transistor is being influenced by the corresponding field created by some means now before i start anything uh, let me just uh, show you the uh, corresponding symbol for any mosfet so there are two types of mosfet uh, to start with uh, one is known as the n mos and second one is known as the p mos now first of all uh, let me show you the uh, corresponding symbol and i believe that uh, all of you uh, already know the symbol of mosfet but still uh, it is my duty to start with the uh, symbol of mos so to start with you can you can consider it's a three terminal device and gradually you'll see that basically it's a four terminal device i'll be explaining one by one so let me just uh, identify three terminals so just like a bjt it is having three different terminals so if you can remember hopefully you have remembered the three terminals of bjt one is known as the base and the other two are known as emitter and collector so these are the three terminals for bjt so here for a mos uh, we do have uh, three terminals one is known as gate and the other two are known as source and the drain so gate drain and the source so these are the three terminals and in this particular schematic diagram it has been already shown that uh, this terminal is known as the gate terminal this is a source terminal and this is a drain terminal so symbolically it looks something like that so this terminal is the drain this terminal is the source and this is the gate terminal and in fact unlike bjt uh, this mosfet is a symmetrical device as you know bjt is not a symmetrical device what do you mean by the symmetricity as far as the device operation is concerned so we know that for a bjt Uh, we do have uh, three different terminals like uh, if i just uh, show it over here so we do have one in pin type of bjt we have base over here a collector terminal over here and the emitter terminal over here so this bjt was not a symmetrical device why because keeping the base fixed if i just change the position of the collector and emitter you understand the operation of the bjt will not be satisfied what do you mean by that that in bjt we have two different pn junctions we would have a base emitter pn junction and another pn junction between base to collector and for the operation of that particular device as an amplifier we know that this base emitter junction is forward biased and the base collector junction is reverse biased so that the device operates in the linear region of operation in which case the base current and the collector current they are related proportionately so as you know that ic is equal to beta times ib and so on but if i just change the position of this collector and emitter or on the other hand 
instead of connecting the vcc to this collector terminal if i connect the vcc to the emitter terminal and if i connect a register over here and if i want to have a common uh, emitter kind of thing then that particular operation is not being served by this vjt so in other words vjt was a device which is not symmetrical so on the other hand if i have a mos or mos structure so we do have a symmetrical structure what do you mean by the symmetricity that if i just change so there are two different uh, n plus regions as you can see so this entire structure is being formed over a substrate so let us now uh, consider the architecture of that particular device so this is known as n mos n type of mosfet and this n mos is uh, fabricated on a p type substrate so first of all you have to identify what is the substrate so it is nothing but a silicon bar and uh, this is a p type and you understand what is meant by a p type semiconductor so in case of p type semiconductor as you understand we have the acceptor impurities and in case of n type semiconductor we have the donor impurities so this p type semiconductor is there and we do have two different n plus regions and one n plus region is acting as the source and the second n plus region is acting as the drain now perhaps you can understand what is the meaning of this n plus because uh, we have already discussed this part uh, in our basic electronics course that uh, if the carrier concentration uh, it is in the order of say 10 to the power say 16 to say 10 to the power 7 10 to the power 18 or so if it is in this particular order then it is known to be moderately doped and we can uh, designate this as like p or n depending upon the type of the impurity on the other hand if the a corresponding carrier concentration is like 10 to the power 19 to say 10 to the power 21 or even higher then it is known to be say p plus or n plus that means the corresponding concentration is very large p plus or n plus so depending upon the type of impurities whether you have the group 3 5 semiconductor or depending upon your requirement uh, you can have either p type semiconductor or you can have an n type semiconductor now here uh, the substrate is there uh, which is p type and uh, we do have two different regions which are formed by means of ion implantation so i'm not going into the, that particular uh, segment because this is beyond our discussion this belongs to the microelectronics part but however uh, on this particular p type semiconductor two different regions are formed and uh, if the substrate is p type then these two regions are n type or n plus type and on the other hand if I would like to uh, design one p-type MOSFET, so in this case, this p-type MOSFET is generally fabricated on n-type substrate, and these two different regions are p plus. Now, one of the region is known as the source, and second region is known as the drain. Now, if I designate that this region is drain, and eventually you will see that the operation of this uh, MOS as an amplifier or as a switch can be accomplished by providing a positive voltage over here, making the source at the ground potential. That means the source is acting as a common terminal whose corresponding potential is equal to zero, and I'm applying a positive voltage over here. Say that voltage is equal to three volt. So three volt I'm applying over here, and I would like to use that, that particular device as an amplifier. Now, on the other hand, if I call that this is not my source, suppose this is my drain, and this one is the source, if I just interchange these two different segments, and if I call this particular uh, region as the drain region, and if I apply a VDS over here, say 3 volt, and if I make this particular uh, potential equal to 0 volt, then also the corresponding operation of the device will not be hampered. So if I just change the source and drain terminal, that means, uh, so how to uh, designate that one terminal is source and other terminal is drain? The drain is that particular terminal for an N type MOS for which the potential is positive, like 3 volt or so. And normally, we keep this source potential equal to 0. So if I just change, that means if I make this potential equal to, say, 3 volt VDD, and this potential equal to, say, 0 volt, then also the device performs appropriately good. So that's why this particular device is known as a symmetrical type of device, unlike your BZT. So that is the first difference that you can make out of it. And the second difference, uh, which you normally know, that the BZT is a device for which, uh, so as the name suggests, it's a bipolar junction transistor. So the current conduction is because of the movement of both the electrons and the holes. However, for uh, MOSFET, 
we do have the current conduction because of one type of charge carriers. So if I have an N type of MOS, as has been shown over here, so for N type of MOS, the current is generally conducted by the electrons. And on the other hand, if I have a P type MOS, so in case of P type MOS, the current is generally because of the holes. So current is due to one type of charge carrier. So that's why it is unipolar device. And the current conduction is being influenced by applying some voltage. So that's why it's known as field effect transistor. And perhaps you understand what is the meaning of transistor. It is known as a transfer register. And that is true for all types of transistor, whether it is a VJT or it's a MOSFET. Now let us uh, once again uh, come to the architecture of the MOSFET. So we do have a P-type substrate. And on the P-type substrate, we do have uh, two different uh, regions, heavily doped regions. Uh, so that's why they are designated as N plus and N plus for an N type of MOS. And between these two regions, we do have on the substrate, we do have an oxide layer, silicon dioxide layer, uh, for which the thickness has been identified by T ox. So this is nothing but the thickness of the oxide layer. And over and above these three different terminals, so we do have three different terminals. One is known as the source, another no, known as the gate, and the third one is known as the drain. So we do have three different terminals. Now the connection is normally taken by using some metal contact. And over this oxide, so as you know, that oxide is an insulator. So therefore, in order to take the connection, there is a polysilicon gate, and the connection of the gate terminal is taken from that particular point. And apart from these three different terminals, we do have an another terminal, which is known as the substrate terminal or the body terminal or bulk. So substrate or body or bulk. So in short, so these three terminals are known as G, D, and S. G stands for gate, D stands for drain, and S stands for source. Now, if you consider the term substrate, so it also starts with S. So uh, in uh, most of the literature, you'll find that substrate is being replaced by the term body or bulk. So that's why this terminal is known as the B terminal. So in fact, uh, we do have the fourth terminal over here, and gradually we will be observing what is the effect of this body terminal. And uh, this is the fourth terminal of the device. And for the timing, let us assume that this body and source, these are two connected together. That means if the source is grounded, the body is also grounded. Later on, we will investigate what is the use of this uh, potential, I mean, what is the use of this body potential or bulk potential. So we do have the fourth terminal. So uh, to make sense, uh, we have considered this terminal to be B. That means B stands for body or bulk. Now, uh, as you can see, the, the operation of the device is basically controlled in the substrate region under this uh, oxide layer. And uh, this region, uh, as has been identified, in the diagram is having a length of capital L. In fact, uh, whenever uh, these two different regions are grown by means of ion implantation, the source region and drain regions, and there is a notion which is known as side diffusion. So because of side diffusion, as you can understand, there is an overlapping between this oxide layer and this uh, N plus layer. And so therefore, uh, if I consider that this, this particular difference, I mean, if I consider this particular length to be L drawn, or if I consider this, this length to be, say, L drawn, or LD, or rather it will be better if I mark it like L drawn. And if this overlapping portion equal to say LD, then you can understand that L drawn from this particular diagram, L drawn is given by L plus 2LD. And this L is nothing but the L effective. L or L effective, we can say. So in other words, this L is given by L drawn minus 2 of 2 times LD. And the operation of the device is basically controlled in this particular region under the oxide layer. Now, this is all about the architecture uh, of this uh, particular device. So let me summarize. Uh, we do have three different uh, terminals. Uh, one is known as the gate terminal. Second one is known as the drain terminal. And the third one is known as the source terminal. 
and the drain and source terminal can be interchangeably used. And uh, we have uh, an oxide layer, and over and above which uh, this polysilicon uh, connection is there, and from which the the gate terminal is connected and we do have uh, two, two different terminals over here one is known as the drain terminal second one is known as the source terminal and this terminal is known as a substrate or body or bulk and normally uh, initially we we will uh, start considering that the source and the body or bulk they are connected together now uh, to understand uh, the behavior of this particular uh, device let us now go to the energy band diagram and already uh, you are familiar with this energy band diagram so uh, as you can see over here uh, we do have uh, three different uh, regions so this one is known as the source region this one is known as the drain region and between these two we do have a channel region in fact if i just go back in in this particular diagram the channel initially the channel will not exist initially whenever there is no uh, potential being applied over here let us assume that uh, the source is initially grounded. There is no point about that. Now let us assume that the drain potential, this VDS, is equal to zero. So although the potential has been marked like VDS, but let us assume that initially we start with VDS equal to zero. And let us assume that initially VGS equal to zero. So everywhere we are mentioning the, the voltage with respect to the source. So source here acts like a reference voltage. So the gate voltage with respect to source is VGS and gate volt and drain voltage with respect to source is VDS. So if the source potential is equal to zero, so this VGS is nothing but the gate potential, absolute potential, which is being applied at the gate terminal. And similarly, uh, VDS is nothing but the drain potential, which has been applied over here. Now initially, what happens? Uh, we do have two different uh, N plus regions and uh, for the successful operation of this particular device, these two PN junctions, so as you can understand, there are two different PN junctions, this P and N plus between the substrate and the drain, there is one PN junction, and between this, this substrate and this uh, source, there is another PN junction. So initially, these two PN junctions are there, and these two PN junctions are reverse biased. Now, as these two junctions are reverse biased, so as you can understand, and there is no physical connection, because for a P-type semiconductor, the majority carriers are the holes and within the n plus region we do have the majority carriers like electrons so initially although the electrons are there uh, both in these two n plus regions but there is no connection between them so the electrons cannot move from this terminal to that terminal so we have to so initially there is no channel existing between the source and the drain and here our objective first of all to develop to design one channel to design a path between the source and drain so that the flow of electrons for in, in type most obviously so the flow of electrons is possible so although i'm saying it's a flow of electrons but it will be better to say flow of the charge carriers because whenever we will be considering the p type mos so you understand that for p type mos uh, the entire uh, architecture will be reversed uh, i mean uh, this uh, instead of having p type substrate we do have an n type substrate and instead of having n plus uh, as the source or drain region we do have p plus as the source or drain region so in that particular case, the holes will be the charge carriers which are responsible for the current conduction. So for n-type MOS, the electrons are responsible for the current conduction, and for p-type MOS, the holes are responsible for the current conduction. Now let us uh, restrict our discussion uh, for n-type MOS only to understand the device physics. So uh, in initially, we do have two different n-plus regions, but uh, these two n-plus regions, so there are plenty of electrons, as you can understand, because they are n-plus but they, they are not connected together. So since they are not connected together, so electrons from one region to the another region cannot flow. So first of all, you have to identify what are the different operations because of which we normally use any transistor. So already uh, perhaps this is known to you. Uh, basically, uh, two operations are being uh, performed by transistor. Uh, one operation is known as amplification. Uh, for amplification, we do use the transistor. And the second operation is the switching. So switching and the amplification. So these are the two different operations. Now let us assume that uh, I'm going to use uh, this uh, transistor as a switch. So uh, as you understand for a switch, uh, even for electrical switch, if I consider, so even for electrical switch, suppose, uh, so this is one terminal, this is another terminal. Suppose this terminal is A, this terminal is B, and there is a switch in between them. What is our job? Our job is to connect the 
point A to point B. So electronically, the first and the foremost uh, fundamental switch is nothing but a diode, as you know. If I put a diode over here with the cathode side over here and anode side over there, and depending upon the uh, the potential the, between these anode to cathode, this VAK, the switch will be either on or off. But uh, the diode is acting as a switch which is not controlled. So we cannot control the operation. So depending upon the VAK value, whether uh, this point A will be connected to point B or not. But somehow we can control the, the switching operation by means of a transistor. So suppose uh, that this point A will be connected to point B, and that connection is being controlled by some hard terminal. And that is the fundamental idea behind any uh, three terminal device like a BJT or MOSFET. So, as you know, for a BJT, is we have a three terminals like a base, emitter, and collector. And uh, depending upon the uh, potential that you're applying at the base terminal, and if the value is very large, the base potential, so that the current can enter into the saturation region, then uh, you understand that collector and emitter, these two terminals are almost having the same potential. And under saturation condition, this uh, drop between the collector and emitter, as you know, is given by PC sat. And on the other hand, if the base potential is very small, if it's less than the cut-in voltage, like a zero volt or so, if the base is grounded, so under this condition, this collector and emitter, they are not connected together, and we'll say that the device will be off. So if I provide for a BJT, if I provide almost uh, no voltage at the base terminal, then the device will be off. The collector and emitter, they are not connected together. And if the value of, I mean, if the base potential over here is very large, so that it can drive the device into the saturation region, then this collector emitter terminal, I mean, the potential difference will be very small, like say 0 0.1 or 0 0.2 volt. And we can say that this collector and emitter, they are connected together. That means these two points are connected together. So the same operation is also being performed over here. So we do have uh, two different terminals. So this is that one terminal, the source terminal. This is one point, this is another point, drain and source. And uh, the regulation of the current is being controlled by the third terminal, which is known as the gate terminal. But remember, uh, we have one particular oxide layer beneath the gate. So that's why this is not directly connected. So we cannot say that there will be some gate current over here. The current will be induced by means of the corresponding capacitor, which is present over here. So we do have a two different capacitor over here. One capacitor is the gate oxide capacitor because we do have uh, one oxide layer. And apart from that, uh, this uh, we do have a charge carriers. And the charge carriers are separated by some insulator. So it will give you the notion of a capacitor. And uh, apart from that, we do have to in P junction, PN junction, reverse bias PN junction at the source end and the drain end. And obviously, one a depletion capacitor will be there. So eventually, there are two different capacitors. One uh, between this, uh, one which will replicate the operation of uh, this uh, gate oxide, so which is nothing but the oxide capacitance. And the second capacitance is nothing but the depletion region capacitance. So here, our job is to uh, create a channel so that. Uh, so whenever the, there is no channels, you understand that the device will operate as an off switch. So if uh, this all the potentials are zero, that means VDS equal to zero and VGS equal to zero. So that means th although there are plenty of electrons in this side and plenty of electrons in this side, but they are not connected. So as a matter of fact, there is no channel. So no channel will be existing under normal condition if, if you do not apply any voltage over here. And then what happens? There will be no channel. So as a matter of fact, the device will be off. Now what happens if we apply some positive voltage over here at the gate terminal? Suppose the voltage is like, so you are increasing the voltage from say 0 volt to 0.5 volt, 0.5 volt, 1 volt, and so on. So as you apply positive voltage over here, but remember, uh, there will not be any current flow because we do have one insulator over here. And because of the presence of this insulator, the current cannot flow. But whenever the potential has been provided at this particular terminal, in form of VGS or VG, which is known as the gate voltage. So what happens if you're applying some positive voltage over here and in the P-type semiconductor, we do have the holes as the majority carrier and the electrons as the minority carrier. So as you apply positive voltage over here, so it will be induced. And as a matter of fact, the corresponding holes will be repelled back from, from this particular region. It will be repelled back and we do have only the corresponding ions. So ions will be there and all the holes which are basically 
positive discharge, so they will be repelled back beneath the oxide layer. Now, if you go on increasing the corresponding value of uh, gate potential VGS, after a certain limit, you will see that there will be plenty of electrons which are coming at this particular point, and uh, because of which uh, one channel will be created. And when uh, the value of VGS is just higher than a particular voltage, then you find that we will be having uh, electrons uh, gathered uh, just uh, beneath this particular oxide layer. And we can see that the channel has been created. And now the electrons from the source region, they can flow towards the drain region. Now, if the electrons flow from the source to the drain, so we can see that the current will flow from the drain to the source. So that's why even if the device is symmetrical, uh, we uh, normally say one terminal as a source terminal and the second terminal as a drain terminal. What do you mean by the source? Source means it is nothing but the, it, or it is acting as a source of the charge carriers. So for n-type MOS, it will, it will act as a source of the electrons. And, in, and drain, uh, that means all the electrons will be collected at this particular point. So as a matter of fact, the electrons will flow from this, this terminal to that terminal from source to drain. So since the electrons are flowing from source to drain, so therefore the current will flow from the drain to source. So accordingly, the naming has been done. Now let us try to understand uh, what is that particular voltage. So in fact, uh, the channel is not created if the VGS value or gate to source voltage is less than a particular uh, threshold value. So under this condition, as long as VGS value is less than VTH, so if I write it over here, that as long as VGS is gate to source potential is less than VTH, the threshold voltage, then what happens? Uh, this channel is not created beneath this oxide layer. There will not be sufficient amount of electrons gathered over here so that the channel is not created. And we say that the, that particular interface is not inverted. So it is known as the inversion of layer. So initially it was P type, but as you provide a positive voltage over here, so because of the induction, we do have a number of negatively charged electrons being gathered beneath the oxide layer. Now, we need to provide sufficient amount of voltage at the, at the gate terminal so that plenty of electrons come over here and this P-type semiconductor beneath this uh, oxide layer will become N-type. So we say that it will be inverted or inversion layer, as we normally say. Now, as long as VGS is less than VTH, there is no channel and the device is off, MOS is off. MOS will be off. That means there is no connection between the source and the drain. And when VGS value get to source voltage is higher than the threshold voltage, then uh, we say that the MOS will be on. That means MOS is on. That means the source and drain, they are connected. And uh, we do have a current conduction from the drain to the source terminal. Now let us try to visualize uh, this particular operation from a different perspective. And that perspective is the band diagram perspective, energy band diagram perspective. So as you know, uh, let us start with three different regions. Now, initially, uh, we do have a source region. And source region, uh, we have an N plus source and N plus drain. And the channel is initially, although uh, the, the term channel has been written over here, but it will be better if I, if I uh, designate that part like, the, like a substrate. Initially, it, it was substrate. There was no channel initially which is P-type on an NMOS. So in fact, this entire thing has been shown for NMOS. So it will be better uh, if I write it over here that this entire band diagram has been shown for NMOS. So for your understanding, uh, for NMOS, source is N plus. Drain is also N plus. And the substrate or body, I should call it like body, it is P, P type. And if you recall uh, the corresponding uh, band diagram for any intrinsic, let, let me start from the intrinsic semiconductor perspective. So as you know, we do have two, two different bands. One is known as the conduction band, second one is known as the valence band. And uh, the another uh, important uh, terminology associated with the device physics is known as the Fermi level. Now, for intrinsic semiconductor, if it is not doped at all, the Fermi level will be existing just in the middle. So, if this is the conduction band, this is the valence band, and the Fermi level will be existing over here in between, exactly in the middle. And as you can remember, uh, this difference is known as the forbidden energy gap, EG, which is nothing but the EC minus EV. 
Now, what happens for uh, n-type semiconductor? For n-type semiconductor, the Fermi level will move towards the conduction band. And for p-type semiconductor, the Fermi level will move towards the valence band. So for source and drain, we do have uh, n plus region. So therefore, this Fermi level will be very much close to the conduction and minima, which is uh, designated by EC over here. And the Fermi level is EF for source and drain. So this is very much close to the conduction and minima. And for the substrate or for body, since it is p-type, so initially you know, this uh, this EF value, that means uh, this Fermi level will be very much close to the valence band maxima. So this is the initial condition. So we are observing these three different regions in isolation. That means uh, a different N plus, a different N plus, and different P. Now in the structure itself, so they are connected together. So they are physically connected, this N plus, P, and N plus. So therefore, you know, under the equilibrium condition, the Fermi level will be constant throughout the device. Now, since the Fermi level is constant, so therefore what happens, there is a band bending. So the corresponding energy over here for the electrons, so, so since EF is high at this particular position, so what happens, this EF must go down for source or drain, or in other words, we can say that EF for the channel will increase, or EF for body will increase. So in other words, so whenever the equilibrium uh, is present, so a band bending will take place and uh, the corresponding band diagram will look something like that. The notion is that since uh, we are uh, discussing a single device, so where uh, the source drain and channel or source drain and substrate, all of them are physically connected. So the Fermi level will be constant throughout the device. And to ensure that the Fermi level is constant, what happens? The energy level uh, for the charge carriers in the channel region, so it will be moving upwards or on in, on the other hand we can also say that uh, the corresponding energy corresponding to the electrons in the, in the source region or the electrons in the drain region they can be reduced and ultimately we do have a particular band bending over here now because of the band bending as you understand uh, so this is the n plus region this is the n plus region source and drain so the current conduction will only take place when the electrons can move from this position to that position, depending upon the applied potential. So I am assuming that um, I have provided one positive supply over here, VDS over here, say 5 volt or 3 volt. So since the positive supply is uh, connected at the drain terminal, so the electrons will move from source to the drain. On the other hand, since the device is symmetric, if you provide positive supply over here at the source region, then the electrons will move from this point to that point, then we cannot designate that particular region as a source region because since the electrons are coming towards it so it will be uh, called like a drain region right so if i apply positive voltage over here so electrons will move from this point to that point and if i provide a positive voltage over here then the electrons will move from this point to that point i think it will be better if i use a highlighter that means uh, if i provide a positive voltage over here at the drain terminal then the electrons will move from this point to that point so the current will flow from drain to source and if i provide positive potential over here then the electrons will move from this point, this side to this side. However, the movement of the electrons is not so easy. Why? Because we do have some barrier potential over here. So electrons need to cross that particular barrier potential. Otherwise, it is not possible for the electrons to jump this barrier and go over here. And this is the condition under equilibrium condition. This is the situation under equilibrium condition where uh, there is no conduction of current and there is no channel created. So that's why I have told you that uh, it will be better uh, if I if I call this as a body or a substrate instead of channel, because initially there is no channel. Now what happens? We have to apply some positive gate potential or positive potential at the gate terminal. Now if I apply some positive potential, and before that, uh, let me tell you that uh, uh, if, if I just consider uh, this uh, connection, uh, this metal connection uh, at the source terminal, at the drain terminal, at the gate terminal. So this metal connection, I am assuming that uh, the corresponding Fermi levels are aligned. That means the Fermi level for the metal is aligned with the Fermi level for this source and drain. So if I just uh, come back over here, so we do have uh, this Fermi level EF. EF is equal to EF over here and EF D is equal to EF over here. So that is the si situation under the source and the drain region. Now what happens in between? In between we do have a very high value of barrier so this has been identified by some dotted line and dotted line corresponds to vg equal to zero that means the gate potential equal to zero now when gate potential equal to zero then the corresponding uh, value corresponding uh, barrier is very large that is ecx this is very large 
So the electrons need to cross this particular barrier to come over here. And under practical situation, we can we can consider that very few electrons may cross this junction and come over here. And practically, the current uh, that that is flowing from source to drain is is almost very very small and can be neglected, which is known as a leakage current of MOSFET. So uh, for practical calculations, you can just neglect this leakage current because uh, no matter. Uh, how much electrons are there over here or how much electrons are here over here uh, in this drain region, the electrons cannot cross this barrier. So there will be no conduction of current. Now what happens whenever you increase the gate potential, that means if you increase the VG value, now as you increase the VG value, the corresponding ECX, which is nothing but the corresponding energy, so that particular energy will be reducing and what happens at a particular uh, VG called to say, let it be VDD, that is the drain potential or so, let it be three volt or so. That means the gate potential and the drain potential being the same at any particular value of VG, which is known as the threshold value. At the threshold value, the corresponding uh, barrier will be small enough so that the electrons can uh, cross this barrier and it can come over here. It, it can cross the barrier and the channel is created and it can roll down over here to the, towards the drain, from the source towards the drain. And then uh, we can say that since uh, there is a path of conduction uh, for the electrons from the source to the drain, so we can say that uh, the current uh, is being established and the channel is established, and that current is known as the the drain to source current or the drain current in short for the MOSFET. But uh, in order to ensure that uh, the drain current uh, is actually present in any particular MOS circuit, so first of all you have to invert the channel and you have to invert this uh, this substrate beneath the oxide layer until and unless this layer is not inverted there is no connection established between the source and the drain and that is being done by reducing uh, by increasing the value of the gate potential or by reducing this uh, ecx value right so uh, this is uh, this is for uh, the vg this is the dependence of vg uh, as i have told that uh, so far we have assumed that uh, the drain potential equal to zero that is uh, drain is uh, connected towards uh, the source, that means VDS value equal to zero. That means drain and source, they are at the same potential. And initially we have started with uh, source uh, at the ground potential, therefore drain is also grounded. So uh, there is no change uh, between the drain and source potential. And if you increase the VGS value, one point will come when the channel is uh, inverted. Uh, and I mean, this uh, layer is inverted and the channel is created. And uh, this is the beginning of the current conduction. And this is known as the corresponding voltage is known as a threshold voltage. Now, what happens whenever you provide uh, a higher value of VDS and at the same time you provide a corresponding uh, value of gate potential? Now, let us uh, let us uh, consider this particular slide. Now, here uh, we have assumed that this dotted line, this dotted blue line, uh, is for a very small value of VGS. And uh, this black line, this farm line, is for a small value, a high value of VGS. Now, moreover, we have considered that the VDS value is not zero here. Now, in the previous slide, we have assumed that the VDS was zero here. We have assumed that VDS was zero. So that's why VS equal to zero, VT equal to zero. I think it will be better if I write it down. So here we are just observing. So here VDS drain to sub drain to source equal to zero and we are observing the effect of VGS or VG effect of VG on conduction on current conduction on current conduction. So we are observing the effect of VG on current conduction. So as you understand, when the value of VG is just higher than threshold, so once again, let me tell you that for NMOS device, this threshold value is positive, and for PMOS device, the threshold value will be negative. So if I consider threshold value, uh, so for NMOS, for NMOS, for NMOS, the VG value should be greater than VTH, in which case VTH is positive, and for PMOS,
is get potential should be greater than mod of vth because in that case it will be negative for pmos we need to provide some negative supply at the gate terminal now here we have assumed that the drain and source they are connected towards the ground so that's why vd is equal to 0 and we are observing the effect of vg the gate potential on the current conduction so point will come when the vg crosses vt is the threshold voltage then we find that the corresponding value of current will be there so for pmos the mod i should write mod vg over here mod vg because both both of them are negative so mod vg greater than mod vt each now here in this particular slide we are observing the effect of both vds as well as vgs now the dotted line dotted line this one is for low vgs and the form line form line is for high vgs and obviously here vds is non zero the drain to source potential is non zero is not equal to zero assuming that the source potential equal to zero but we are increasing the drain potential so source potential equal to zero vs equal to zero but vd is no, vd is non zero now since vds is non zero so what happens if i consider the corresponding quasi fermi level uh, for uh, in the drain region and in the source region we find that the quasi fermi level in the source region will not be modified because the source potential has not been altered the source potential is kept at zero volt however the drain potential has been increased and the corresponding value of a vds is more than zero it is no longer zero vds is greater than zero and as a matter of fact the corresponding quasi fermi level in the drain region will be modified so it will be nothing but ef1 minus q times vds so initially uh, when we do not apply any vds the quasi fermi level this ef1 and ef2 both of them were same both of them were same ef1 and ef2 when no vds was applied now uh, with the application of vds the quasi fermi level of uh, the drain region is modified by ef1 minus q times vds now as a matter of fact as you can observe from this diagram that this ef1 and ef2 they are not at the same level their difference is q times vds so here vds is non zero so non zero vds is there so depending upon that the corresponding deviation will take place and this dotted deviation and the form deviation is based on the corresponding barrier potential which has been created by means of vgs now if vgs is very small like 0 volt or just higher than 0 volt in that case the barrier potential will be very large and under this condition uh, there is no channel existing between the source and the drain and the corresponding uh, current uh, is almost zero which is known as a leakage current now as you go on increasing the value of vgs then what happens the corresponding barrier potential is reduced and a point will come when the electrons can find a sufficient uh, energy to uh, cross this particular barrier potential and it can come over here now here uh, this particular uh, graph shows the variation of uh, vgs i mean uh, how does this EC varies with uh, with VGS, keeping VDS constant at 0 0.6 volt? Now, what happens uh, if I just uh, keep the value of VDS constant, let it be 0 0.6 volt, and if I increase the value of VGS, what happens initially? It was something like that. In fact, uh, in the last slide, uh, okay, uh, this has been shown over here. So here we are increasing the value of uh, VGS. So the same thing has also been shown in the last slide, considering two different value of VGS. So dotted one was for low VGS and the form one was for the high VGS. The same thing has also been shown over here, considering uh, different values of VGS, say one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on. As you, as you see from this diagram, this is an experimental one. And as you see from the diagram, as you increase the value of VGS from this value to this value, as the VGS is increased, the corresponding height of the barrier is reducing and it will favor the 
current conduction. So initially, VGS is very small, so th there is almost no current. And as you increase uh, the value of VGS, keeping VGS constant, then uh, the corresponding variation of this electric field, as you can see over here, electric field will be, I mean, EC, ECX value, that energy will be linear. And as a matter of fact, the electric field will be uniform. That will be constant. Electric field will be constant because this ECX is linear. So initially, it, it was not linear when uh, the VGS value was very small. And as you increase the VGS value from 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 4, and so on, for a sufficiently high value of VGS, get to source voltage, the corresponding energy, this energy is linear, ECX is linear with respect to X. And as a matter of fact, if I compute the corresponding electric field, that will be uniform throughout. That is the scenario. And uh, the same thing has also been shown for pin stop. Now, uh, before I uh, say anything regarding the pin stop, let us once again uh, go back uh, to the first uh, diagram. So the condition uh, which we have established so far that if I just uh, observe uh, the region beneath the oxide layer, I think it will be better if I, if I draw a diagram, a cross-sectional view of any uh, in MOS. So this is the p type substrate. And over and above which I have uh, considered two different N plus regions. So this is the p type substrate. p type substrate. And we do have uh, two N plus regions as the source and the drain. So this is N plus. This is another N plus. And we do have an oxide layer over here. This is oxide layer. And suppose the gate connection is taken from this terminal. So we do have a metal contact. Here also we do have metal contact. So this is the source. It is S. And this is gen. So initially what happens? Suppose uh, let us assume that the source is grounded. And initially, when Vg is equal to 0, so there is no channel beneath this uh, oxide layer, silicon dioxide layer, there is no channel. And as you go on increasing Vg, as Vg is greater than 0, the holes which are present over here, so these holes will be repelled back. And accordingly, we do have only the negatively charged ions beneath the oxide layer. And a point will come when Vg equal to Vth threshold voltage. Then you can understand that uniformly, the electrons will be there. And already have shown that uh, since this uh, electron energy is uh, linear uh, with, uh, with the distance, so understand that the corresponding electric field will be uniform. So it will be distributed uniformly. So throughout constant. So we can expect that at every point in the channel. So now the channel has been created. And now we can say that uh, along this channel, so this is the length of the channel, capital L. So along the channel, this will be uniform. I mean, everywhere you'll find that the corresponding potential, this gate to substrate potential, or gate to source potential, it is always greater than the threshold. That means along this uh, channel from say 0 to x equal to 0 to x equal to l if i consider suppose this, this stands for this stands for x equal to 0 that is the beginning of the channel and this is the end of the channel suppose this is x equal to l in fact the channel plays a very vital role in in most technology and uh, as you uh, move further and the corresponding channel dimension has been reduced significantly so when we were the students, so that time uh, the channel dimension was as small as a few microns, right? So almost say eight or 10 years back, it was like few microns. And now the technology has been an advanced in such a manner. Uh, obviously this is because of the improvement uh, in the field of VLSI and in, in the field of microelectronics. And nowadays uh, uh, one can uh, design uh, the corresponding channel uh, whose uh, length is channel length is as small as a few nanometers. So from micrometer to nanometer, so what's it, what's it, uh, say 10 years or so, 10 to 12 years, you, you just try to imagine 
the corresponding reduction in the in the channel so as a matter of fact we can design more complex circuits now so anyway uh, so that is that is beyond our scope of discussion because this is uh, all about the microelectronics part so the channel plays very vital role or the length of the channel we will be observing what is the role of this channel over here in fact the current is also being uh, controlled by the length of the channel so anyway so if i consider these are the two different uh, boundary x equal to 0 beginning of the channel and x equal to the end of the channel so if the drain potential equal to 0 uh, that means if drain is also connected to the source vds equal to 0 so under this condition everywhere we can expect that the gate to substrate potential is always greater than the threshold voltage so as a matter of fact the corresponding layer will be inverted and the channel will be created but try to remember that whenever you apply some uh, drain potential over here that means uh, when vds is non zero then uh, the gate to substrate potential assuming that the substrate is ground, also grounded suppose this is also grounded this is connected to let's say the source but if vd is non zero if it is more than zero then you understand that the corresponding potential i mean the, the difference is gate to this particular point this will not be uniform rather if i just consider the overdrive voltage the overdrive voltage for non zero vds the overdrive voltage overdrive voltage for zero vds for vds equal to zero is given by this vgs minus vth that is overdrive voltage get to source voltage is the voltage which has been provided over here so i can consider vg or vgs no harm because source is grounded so overdrive voltage is given by vgs minus vth because of which the charge will be accumulated over here and the current conduction may take place but whenever vds is non zero so let me write down the same expression so overdrive voltage so overdrive voltage for vds non zero that means greater than zero so then this is no longer constant and i cannot write like vgs minus vth only rather i should write like vgs minus vth minus some vx and this vx term will depend upon the position or the value of x so what is that vx so vx equal to it will be zero so whenever you are at the source end so vx will be zero when x equal to zero at source so whenever you are at source the potential is nothing but vg minus vth now here we have applied some vds voltage so vx will be equal to vds when x equal to l or length at drain so at the drain end it will be nothing but vgs minus vth minus vds so as you can understand over here just by observing on the, this uh, particular expression that the overdrive voltage for uh, vds greater than 0 that means vds not equal to 0 is not constant rather it will depend upon the position so along the x the corresponding value of the overdrive voltage will vary so here at the source end the overdrive voltage is nothing but vgs minus vth but now unlike the first case where vds equal to zero now you are applying some positive vds over here so was 3 volt or 4 volt some positive vds you have applied and as a matter of fact the corresponding uh, overdrive voltage for vds not equal to zero is given by vgs minus vth minus vx at any point x if you consider within the channel and here uh, this is the uh, two different boundary condition for uh, vx so one is uh, vx equal to 0 when uh, you are at source that means at x equal to 0 and uh, vx will be equal to vds when x equal to 8 that means you are at the drain position now the another thing you, you must uh, remember that uh, in order to ensure that uh, the channel is inverted or uh, the channel is created rather the condition that you have to follow that you have to maintain is that at every point along the channel the difference between this uh, this overdrive voltage must be higher than the threshold voltage it should be higher than the threshold voltage otherwise the channel cannot be created 
Now let us consider a situation in which case the VDS value equal to just greater than VGS minus VTH, just greater than that. Then what happens? The potential at this particular point, the water voltage will be exactly equal to zero. So then we can say that the corresponding channel is pinched off. That means what? So even if the channel is created over here, but as you increase the value of VDS, so what happens? The effective voltage, which is responsible for the accumulation of charge beneath the oxide layer, or which is responsible for creating the channel, this effective voltage will also be reducing because this effective voltage will reduce with the increase of VDS. This is given by VGS minus VTS minus VX. And these are the two limits for VX, 0 at X equal to 0 and VDS at X equal to L. So as you increase the value of VDS from some certain value from 0 to, as you come towards VGS minus VTH, then the channel will be pinched off at this particular point. So I think it will be better. Okay. It will be better if I show it over here only. So if I if I assume that uh, VD, VDS, later on we can also establish the same thing uh, mathematically. So if VDS equal to VGS minus VTH, then the channel will be pinched off. Then the channel will be pinched off at the drain end. Because under this condition, the corresponding potential over here will be exactly equal to zero. VGS minus VTH minus this one. The channel is pinched off over here, there is no channel. And if you increase it further beyond VGS minus VTH, and if I assume that VDS, uh, let, let me take some different color. And let, let, let me assume that uh, VDS is, uh, the value of VDS is greater than VGS minus VTH. Then the channel might be pinched off even before. The channel might be pinched over here. Over here. At this particular position, the pinch off takes place. Now, as pinch off takes place, what happens? Uh, the corresponding channel will no longer be existing beyond the pinch off. The channel will no longer be existing. But remember that during the pinch off, even if you increase the value of VDS from, from the saturation value, the corresponding current will be remaining constant. So why the current uh, is constant? So in order to answer this question, so I think it will be better if I just write down the expression or if I write down the statement. So even after pinch off, so even after pinch off, the drain current or drain to source current. So it will be better to name like drain current. So drain current remains constant. Although this is true for long channel device. So we'll be also discussing the different uh, second order effects gradually. Let us assume that the channel is large enough. So drain current remains constant. So even after pinch of drain current remains constant and since the current is constant, we can say that, that uh, we have entered into the saturation region. So we do have a defined notion of saturation over here. I have initially told you that uh, unlike BJT, it's basically a voltage control device. So as you know, uh, for the BJT bipolar junction transistor that we have discussed uh, in some previous uh, semester, this BJT was current control device. And this is voltage control device, this MOS, and that's why the name is a field effect transistor. So the current conduction is being uh, influenced by the electrostatic field, the channel uh, creation beneath the uh, oxide layer uh, in the substrate. Now here, uh, as you know, for uh, BJT, uh, we do have three different regions like a cutoff region, we do have a linear or active region and another region called saturation region. And the saturation region is where, in which case the VC value is very small, uh, close to say 0 0.2 to 0 0.3 volt. And uh, when the device is uh, on, when the BJT is on, then we should, or whenever the BJT is acting as an on switch, then uh, we would use, or we would, uh, bias the PJT at the saturation region. However, here we find that for uh, MOSFET, whenever the current is remaining constant, so that particular region is known as the saturation region. So here we are measuring with respect to the current. So when the current is remaining constant, so even if after a pinch off, if you increase the uh, value of uh, VDS, that means the drain to source voltage, we will see that 
initially we will see that the current will be remaining constant but gradually uh, for short channel effect we will we'll be observing that if we increase the vds value then the current will also increase slightly uh, so this is known as the channel and modulation so i am not going into that right now but definitely i'll be discussing this one so for the time being let us assume that uh, even after the pinch off uh, so if you just increase the hello vds drain to source voltage what happens the current will be constant so for vds equal to vgs minus vth the channel will be pinched off at the drain point that means over here now if you go on increasing vds then the pinch off position will be moving towards the source side just like this so it will be moving towards the source side and uh, if you uh, use a very high level of vds then it will be coming over here and eventually it can come towards the source now uh, in the pinch of region the drain current is remaining constant there is no increment there is no reduction in the drain current so why there is no reduction or no increment so to give answer uh, to this question let us once again uh, uh, consider that particular diagram energy diagram as you can see the current is basically being controlled by the barrier potential and this is the property for any transistor for any transistor there are two different uh, pn junctions and the corresponding uh, barriers potential barriers are created and depending upon the voltage that we apply at the third terminal or the controlling terminal the corresponding potential barrier is adjusted and you can control the flow of electron or flow of charge carriers from the one region to the other region now here for the mosfet the current is basically controlled by the corresponding height of the barrier and this height of the barrier is essentially governed by the value of vgs so whenever the vgs is sufficiently high then the corresponding value of the particular barrier is small and the electrons can have sufficient probability to overcome this barrier and it can roll down and can uh, come uh, towards this particular drain and in fact the corresponding electric field is having a serious implication on the value of vds so if you increase a very high value of vds if you increase a very high value of drain potential then what happens the corresponding electric field will be strong enough to move the electron from this point to that point so therefore the flow of current is not controlled by the value of vds rather the flow of current is being controlled by the height of the barrier by the height of the barrier potential and once the electrons can cross this height and cross the barrier and it can easily jump over here from the source to the drain so uh, this is uh, true for uh, this uh, mosfet transistor as well and we will find that even if i increase the value of vds uh, even after a, a certain value the corresponding drain current will be remaining constant it will be constant throughout for long channel devices and for short channel devices we will see that uh, the corresponding increase of uh, vds will have some implication on the value of uh, the drain current that is id and you will see that uh, that is the second order effect you will see that when the vds is uh, increased then the corresponding value of drain current will also be increasing by some 1 plus lambda vds factor so in even that will be discussed in some uh, later classes now uh, if i just uh, once again uh, consider this uh, mos transistor and if i would like to find out the corresponding charge density this charge density is eventually governed by the overdrive voltage so charge density so charge density is given by the amount of charge per unit length so this charge density qd i can write this like so the voltage uh, that you have is given by vgs minus vth minus vx i am assuming that vds is non zero so vth vgs minus vth minus vx and uh, apart from that we do have the c ox which is nothing but the oxide capacitance per the unit area so this is the charge density so q is the charge density so here charge density is defined like the amount of charge per unit length because everything is measured with respect to the length 
and C-ox, uh, we do have a C-ox, which is nothing but the oxide capacitance because the charge is induced because of this oxide capacitance, gate oxide capacitance. In fact, there is no gate oxide capacitance present explicitly, but we can visualize the effect. So oxide capacitance per unit area, oxide capacitance per unit area. So, so this has been multiplied with the width. So let me tell you what is the width. So for this particular diagram, this is known as the width, width of the device. So this is the weight. So oxide capacitance is governed by C ox per unit area. So if I would like to find out the corresponding capacitance per unit length, it has to be multiplied with W. So this is the expression for the charge density. Now, how can I relate this charge density with the current? So current, you know, current is given by charge per unit time. I is equal to dq dt, charge per unit time. So if I can multiply this uh, charge density with the velocity of the charge carriers, so this charge density, so that means charge per unit length and multiplied with the velocity. And what is velocity? Velocity is length per unit time. So this will give you the expression of current. So this entire thing length per unit time is nothing but the velocity. Velocity of the charge carriers. Sorry. velocity. So the current expression, if I would like to find out the current expression, so the drain current, if I write this drain current ID, ID can be written as, we do have some C ox that is oxide capacitance per unit area and the overdrive voltage for non-zero VDS. So VGS, so I think it will be better if I uh, write like ID as a function of X. ID is a function of X, but eventually ID is constant. So uh, no matter whether you write ID as a function of X or not, but to make sense that uh, VGS minus VTH minus V of X and then we do have, so this is the expression for and multiplied with W. So this is the expression for QD and this has to be multiplied with the velocity that is V. Now here, uh, since the uh, charge carrier uh, will, uh, I mean the electrons will flow from the a source to the drain and the current will be flowing uh, from the drain to the source. So therefore, uh, the expression of current uh, can be written like with a negative sign outside because the direction of current is just the opposite of the direction of the charge carriers. There is electrons here. Uh, so uh, it will be better if I just uh, put a negative sign over here. So this ID is governed by that was the expression for this entire thing was the expression for QD, W, C ox, VGS minus VTH minus VX. So this is the expression for QD, the charge density that is charge per unit length. And this is multiplied with the velocity. And since we, I'm considering the velocity of the electrons, so electrons will move. Uh, so as you know, uh, velocity is a vector quantity. So if, if the electrons move from the source to the drain, so I have to consider that uh, that direction to be the positive direction, but here the current direction is just the opposite. So therefore I need to put a negative sign over here. So 
so there will be minus m so uh, you already know that the velocity is given by mu times the electric field and the electric field e is given by minus dv dx so if i uh, take into account all these things so here a uh, mu means mu n the mobility of the electrons because uh, for n type mosfet uh, the electrons are the carriers electrons are the charge carriers for which the current is being produced so uh, we can write like mu n times c ox and we do have a w and then vgs minus vth minus vx and dvdx now you have to identify the limit so i can write that id dx is equal to mu n c ox w vgs minus vth minus vx d v or vx you can also write because v has a function of x now already we know that v of x will be equal to 0 when x equal to this is 0 when x equal to 0 and v of x equal to vds when x equal to l that is at the drain end so to find out the expression for the current what i can do is i can have an integration so here x is the variable so the integration is from x equal to 0 to x equal to l and here the variable is vx where uh, i can write this vx to be from 0 to vds so since the current is constant oh it will be a capital id so id the drain current so id and uh, integration x uh, 0 to l will give you l only id into l that is nothing but mu n times c ox into w now this part we have to integrate this part with vx equal to with the limit vx equal to 0 and vx equal to vds so if i just put the value x equal to 0 and x equal to vd i mean vx equal to 0 and vx equal to vds so vgs minus vth into dvx so if i integrate this one so we do have vgs minus vth dvx that means it will give you vx x vx equal to 0 to vds and then we have vx dvx so this will give you half vx square 0 to vds so ultimately if i uh, make l in this side left hand side from left to right hand side so we have id is equal to mu n c ox w by l then we have vgs minus vth into vds minus half vds square and this particular equation forms the lifeline of this analog MOS circuit design so that's why uh, i would like to uh, write it down over here once again and you have to remember this expression uh, for the entire uh, duration of this course and we'll be referring this basic expression many a times so the expression of the current train current id or sometimes you can also write like ids the same thing is given by mu n c ox w by l and then we have 
VGS minus VTH into VDS minus half VDS square. So there are certain things which you can observe uh, from this particular expression. So let me tell you one by one. First of all, apart from this uh, externally applied voltage, like VGS and VDS, obviously it will depend upon the threshold voltage VTH, that is fine. So this is the property of the MOSFET. So it depends upon the VGS, externally applied gate to source potential, the drain to source potential, and on the threshold voltage, that is VTH. Now apart from that, it also depends upon the CMOS technology. That means it depends upon C ox, the oxide thickness, uh, oxide capacitance, C ox, and W by L ratio. That means the device dimension. So it depends upon several things. So mu n you cannot change. So this is a constant term. So mu n is constant. This is the mobility of the electron. So this will be constant. And this is nothing but a set of applied potential, I can say. Although VTH is not applied. So this is the applied voltage. So that is fine. It is quite apparent that the current will depend upon the voltage. So applied voltage. So C aux, this particular thing, C aux depends upon the, the corresponding MOS technology. The oxide capacitance. And obviously, this C ox will depend upon the oxide thickness. Already, uh, we have uh, talked about, uh, let me go back to the first slide once again. We have oxide thickness over here, P ox. And as you can understand, this T ox and C ox are dependent. So I can say that it will depend upon the MOS technology, C ox, because ultimately it will depend upon the oxide thickness technology. And the most important and interesting part is that it depends upon W by L ratio. That is a device. This is also related to the MOS technology and the dimension. So it will be better if I write like this dimension, a device dimension. So device dimension. So it will depend upon the device dimension. So as you find here, so IDS uh, is given by mu and C of W by L. Uh, VGS minus VTH into VDS minus half VTS square. Now, I already I have uh, identified the different terms on which this IDS will depend. One is uh, this applied voltage, that is fine. It will depend on the MOS technology and device dimension. And device dimension, uh, that CMOS technology, MOS technology. So initially, uh, uh, almost 10 years back or 15 years back, the corresponding dimension, I mean, the length of the device, uh, length of the channel was small as say, a few microns. And now we can have the MOS devices for which the length, uh, I mean, the channel length is uh, almost close to a few tens of nanometers. So almost thousand times reduction, as you can remember. Now, once again, let me, let me tell you what is that L. So L is nothing but the length of the channel. It is not the length of the entire device. It is the length of the channel. So the entire operation, the useful operation of the MOS is being carried out within this channel region, beneath this oxide layer within the channel region. So that's why whenever we talk about L, the length, so length is the length of the channel, not the length of the entire device. That is one part. And the most important part is that this uh, current, drain to source current or drain current is essentially, it's a function of W by L. That means keeping everything constant, that means VGS, VTS, VDS, keeping everything constant. If one can maintain a fixed W by L ratio, then the current will also be remaining constant. What I mean to say is that, suppose uh, I'm considering a particular technology for which uh, we do have some W1 by L1 ratio. And suppose this W1 and L1, both of them are large, right? But the ratio, suppose the ratio is fixed to be say, say let it be say, let it be say 10, for example. Now for a for an advanced technology, I may have another W2 and another L2 for which the ratio is also 10. But say W2 is say W1 by 1000. 
so thousand times less. And if we can reduce L two accordingly, that L L two is given by L one by thousand. So what happens? Both the width and the length of that particular, I mean, the length of the channel and the width of the device, both of them are reduced by thousand times width and length. But still, if we can uh, reduce it in the same way, proportionate way, so that this W by L ratio is remaining constant, that even for an ancient technology where W by L is equal to 10, and suppose today is also W by L ratio is equal to 10. But remember that each of the W has been reduced by thousand times. But as far as this equation is concerned, if you just look at this equation for the drain current, you will see that as long as we maintain a fixed value of mu and C ox and the other parameters, the current will be constant, current will be same. There is no change in the current. So the people who do research in the MOS technology or MOS, uh, MOS uh, or BLSA technology, they refer that uh, they work with this W by L ratio. So here the electronics people are uh, more specifically the, the device people, uh, those who uh, carry out their research in the area of PLSA design. And so it's a very familiar word. Uh, they say that uh, we, we deal with W by L ratio. So they deal with W by L ratio and the current is essentially a function of W by L. That is an important parameter. And on the other hand, if I consider the civil people, the civil, civil engineers, and civil engineers, they normally uh, work with W into L. Right, the width and, and the length. If I consider any uh, structure of a building, so normally so this is the height and this is the length. And civil people, they are meant for designing some architecture. So this is the height, for example. This is the width, W. And this one is the length, for example. So the so civil people, they normally deal with W cross L, W multiplied with L. And the electronics people, they deal with W by L, uh, more specifically in, in most devices. And so that is the beauty of the equation. Uh, uh, mu and C ox, W by L, uh, VGS minus VTS into VTS minus half VTS square. Although this equation is, is not uh, valid for all the values of VTS, for all the values of uh, source voltage, but initially to start with, uh, I can consider that this expression gives you some notion regarding the variation of the drain current with the other parameters. However, you'll find that uh, already I mentioned that after the pinch off, the current is remaining constant. So how does this equation will be valid? Because uh, apparently it can be seen that uh, this current is having a serious dependence on VDS. Uh, obviously that will be discussed perhaps in the next class. But before that, uh, let us try to appreciate this equation. And this equation forms the basic equation for your uh, understanding uh, this particular subject, analog MOS circuit design. Now with this, uh, let me uh, conclude uh, this today's uh, introductory lecture on analog MOS circuit design.